Okay, back in Phoenix City, there are a couple points of interest that you could use to get your levels up a bit more. First off is the Phoenix Coliseum. We could finally enter it and do some Coliseum challenges. However, some things to keep in mind. First off, all the Pokemon here are in the level 40s. However, they're all super weak. All the trainers have only two or three Pokemon and they're all like unevolved baby Pokemon like Igglybuff and stuff like that. It's really weird, so it shouldn't be a problem to you even if you are underleveled, so just keep that in mind. But something more important, however, is that you cannot use Shadow Pokemon specifically in the Phoenix Coliseum. They just won't let you. So, only go in here with your strongest team of purified Pokemon. Which I've already done, actually, <laughs> yeah, because I don't think you guys really wanted to see a bunch of extra Coliseum challenges that we've already seen over and over and over, not really anything special. But what is special is the reward you get for them. If you beat it for the first time, you get the TM for Sunny Day. Beat it a second time, you get the TM for Sun- or for Rain Dance, excuse me. You beat, beat it the first time, you get Rain Dance. Beat it the second time, you get Sunny Day. Beat it the third time, you get Giga Drain. Beat it the fourth time, you get Solar Beam. Alright then, I'm actually going to use some of these TMs. Giga Drain is going to go on... Yanma. <laughs> Alright then, not going to put it on Bayleaf because it already has Synthesis to heal HP. And I feel like Yama just needs more, better moves. I'm gonna regret this, but we'll get rid of Uproar. Alright. And we learn Giga Drain, alright then. And Solar Beam, Bayleaf learns this through leveling up, however it's like in level 50 or 54 where it learns it. We can give it to Yanma, yeah, right? We are gonna teach it to Bayleaf. So, it would kinda be annoying to use this normally on a single uh, player team, like a single one-on-one -on -one Pokemon team. However, because of double battles, you're usually able to get away with using Solar Beam a lot more often because you're, uh, you could get away with not getting attacked sometimes. Plus, this Bayleaf knows Sunny Day, making it so we don't need to charge up Solar Beam as long as the sun is activated. So I'm going to be incorporating Sunny Day into my strategy a lot more often now. So instead, we're going to get rid of Razor Leaf, which is kind of a shame that we won't be able to hit uh, both opponents at the same time. But, in exchange, we have one of the most powerful grass attacks in the universe. Actually, I think it is the most powerful grass attack. A highly appealing move. Okay, yes it is. Get rid of Razor Leaf. Hopefully, I don't regret this decision. Alright then. Now that's taken care of, let's get out of here. There's still one more place you could go to train in Phoenix City. That is the pre-gym. I tried this fight off camera, it was actually going to be the first thing we did in this episode, but I got my butt handed to me. Hopefully after going through all the Miracle B boss fights, or just uh, rematches again, and going through the Phoenix Stadium, actually with the Phoenix Stadium, I only used Octillery and Yama, yeah believe it or not, Yama actually did something, of course it won't be on camera so you're not going to see it. But whatever, we're going to go into the pre-gym now, and have our last bit of optional training before going back into story progress. Alright, like I said before, if you come here with not a team of six, he will have you fight four trainers in a row, and your reward for it is a white herb. Uh, I believe it's just like a healing item that makes your Pokemon like you a little bit less, so not really all that great. But once you come here with a team of six, he will battle you himself with his purple hair and his pink pants. Alright then, would you like to battle against me? Yes indeed. Okay, gotcha, this is making me feel sort of giddy in my purple pants. When you're ready to go, go to the battle area in the center, and stand on the left hand side. Alright then, just makes me wish James from Pokemon were here. He's the only one who could rock the lavender look. Uh, Jesse doesn't do a too bad of a job with it. Jeffrey, go for it, I'll be right here cheering, as you tend to do. Okay, let's get this battle underway. Show me a great battle. Let's hope for a better outcome this time, pre-gym leader Justy. His Pokemon are all level 40, around that range. They are not the strongest things in the world. However, he has a ridiculously obnoxious, annoying strategy. It is the one, the only, Double Team. He loves to spam the heck out of Double Team, as well as Sandstorm. So, he basically just sort of whittles you down and like just makes it so you cannot hit him whatsoever and you just end up losing over time, over like a 20 minute time period, and it's just really stinking horrible. But now, Umbreon has Faint Attack. 
Fan Attack never misses. Yeah, another thing is that he has a lot of moves on his side that never miss, like Fan Attack and Aerial Ace and stuff. It's just rubbing in your face, being like, yeah, I wish, I bet you wish you could use these moves. <laughs> But now that we have Fane Attack on our side, I at least have a Pokemon that could guarantee me a hit every single turn. But real quick, before we even get that started, I'm going to start with Toxic, because that will assure me damage at the end of every turn as well. Go ahead and use Toxic on Zonflora. Octillery, use Aurora Beam on Cacnea. I started with Octillery because I wasn't sure what Pokemon he was going to send out first. I don't know if I can switch every now and again. And Octillery has moves that would be super effective against the majority of his team, so I went with it, hoping for the best, hoping that it could survive whatever uh, he was up against. Alright then, use Aurora Beam, let's see how much you could do against that Cacnea. Uh, wow, wow! One hit KO? Okay then, jeez, I'm really glad I did that training now. Alright, hopefully this is just a complete joke, I would love for this to be an absolute stinking joke. Alright, Sandshrew, just an unevolved Sandshrew, not too worrisome. So yeah, Double Team is just going to start being super annoying, but we don't have to worry about that anymore because A, it's going to be getting poisoned at the end of every turn, so it's going to go down in 8 turns or less no matter what, even if it heals. And I have Faint Attack, so I could hit it no matter what. Alright then, go ahead and use Octazook on Sandshrew. I think some of his Pokemon have an ability, I don't remember what it's called, but like... It's an ability that makes it so the evasion raises in a sandstorm. So on top of using, uh, I don't think the sandshrew has it, but like on top of having, oh, wow, we got a critical hit. Oh my god, I'm so stinking happy. What am I trying to say? On top of having double team on his side where it just keeps raising his evasion, it raises even more when he has a sandstorm activated. And this is another Pokemon that, this isn't the one I was referring to that would benefit from a sandstorm, as you can tell because it's an Azumarill. All right, then let me see what I can do with this thing. I'm gonna have, uh, let's have Umbreon use Toxic on the Zoom Roll because it's kind of a beefy Pokemon. Uh, I guess we also have Lock On. Lock On makes it so it's sort of like a delayed feign attack. It makes it so our next attack will definitely hit. Uh, just because I don't really wanna, I don't really have anything to attack a Zoom Roll with with Octillery, so we'll just have Lock On on some floor and then we'll uh, follow it up with Ice Beam or Roar Beam. I'm putting strategy into this game! Oh my golly gee! I'm getting better at stuff! I like how stinking happy Azumarill looks. Oh my god, I'm stinking happy. I'm happy this is going by so stinking quickly. Alright then, keep on going. Use Lock On. And if. Oh, okay, I guess I didn't put into account the fact that Lock On could miss. Alright then, of course, as soon as I get proud of myself, that happens. But at least we have Toxic on both of them. That is phenomenal, and it's gonna make this so much easier in the long run. Raise your evasion all you want, it does not matter. Alright, I probably should have thought about that actually. My B, my B. Alright, let's see. Use Faint Attack on Sunflora. Octillery use Psy Beam on Azumarill. Let's see what that does for us. Faint Attack, yes. Oh my god, I'm so sick and happy I have Faint Attack with me. Even though it does the exact same damage as Bite, it's super helpful in this one fight. And it not me for that to rhyme. Uh, somehow we got Psy Beam to hit. If it got confused, that would be phenomenal. You gonna get phenomenal? Uh, no phenomenal. How lame. Alright then, keep on going. Invasiveness Rose. But I don't care. Oh, I do care about that. Don't use an artillery, please. Oh, getting a lot of HP back, but hopefully Toxic will do a buttload of damage in, in exchange. Equivalent exchange. Oh yeah, that is, that's looking good. Alright, then let's go and... I'm actually gonna switch to Fan Attack because I feel like I know what's about to happen. Use Fan Attack on the Zoomerill and Psy Beam on Azumarill. Oh, he didn't do what I thought he was going to do. All right. Because he has the title of Gym Leader, technically, he, of course, uses items. He uses Super Potions every now and again. And it is very annoying, of course, when you thought you, you wouldn't have to worry about that in this game. He would be the first to use it. Of uh, stinking course. I think Light Screen prevents status ailments from being implemented, so it's a good thing we have Toxic up already. So, I'm going to continue to drink from Octillery, which I really don't like. Uh, let's see what we got. How much damage is that going to do? Let's keep on losing HP. Oh, I love that big old damage drain. Uh, let's see. Faint attack on some Flora and side beam on a Zoomerill. That should finish it off, and I like how the Quick Claw keeps on activating. Either that or I'm just faster in general. Are you serious? I didn't... Okay, I didn't get rid of it. Okay. It's going down, down no matter what next turn. Uh, let's see. Down goes Octillery, unfortunately. At least uh, some Flora won't benefit from health gain. 
Uh, in case it was going to hit Octillery with that again, I'm going to switch to Yama because it quad resists brass attacks. Alright, putting strategy into the game. How cool is that? Alright, Mega Drain again. Yeah, you can imagine how stinking infuriating it was to try and get a stinking uh, supersonic on any of these Pokemon. It was horrible. Alright, down goes Azumarill. And down goes Sunflora. Alright then, I love Toxic so stinking much. Alright, get the experience. And even more experience because we got two of them down at once. And he's sending out his last two Pokemon, Gligar. And Nose Pass. All right, both of them benefit from Sandstorm rather than get hurt from a Sandstorm. I'm pretty sure Gligar has an ability that raises its evasion in Sandstorm, so that's unfortunate. We're gonna have to use Toxic on both of them. Uh, I'm gonna start with Gligar because I'm almost certain he has this ability. I don't know if Nose Pass does. So do that, and then Supersonic on Nose Pass. Hope for the best. All right, then good it landed. Thankfully, we didn't miss because Toxic is not 100% accurate, and of course, that has messed me up a bunch of times in, times in the past. Alright, then I love Toxic so stinking much. Oh my god. Alright, then Supersonic, we get it done? Yes, we can. Alright, so maybe we could uh, have it avoid using Double Team, which would be phenomenal. So, like, because this was my first Pokemon game, rather XD was just I, be, being introduced to a lot of Pokemon with these graphics, I always get it confused on whether or not Nose Pass is a Rock type or Rock Steel type. It is just a rock type, but like, it just looks shiny, it looks like it's made of metal, so I tend to think it's a rock steel type. No, it's not until it evolves that it becomes rock steel type. Alright then, so we're gonna all get hurt by the sandstorm, everyone that isn't a rock, ground, or steel type. Speed boost is very nice. Alright, gonna go with that poison, so we, as long as we can survive for the next 8 turns, we're good to go, basically. Toxic on Nose Pass, thankfully didn't get a double team up. Uh, let's see, Giga Drain, since it is a pure rock type, let's use Giga Drain. Uh, let's see, yes, alright then, so we have a guaranteed victory as long as we can survive it out. Oh my stinking god, I'm so stinking happy. This went by, this was 10 million times better. I kind of wish I kept the failed recording, I was just like, oh, I, I give up. I didn't even finish the fight, I was just like, I'm stinking angry, I give up. Uh, I didn't save it, unfortunately, it was just me, like, whining the entire time, being like, why are you doing this double team? Oh my stink I got. This reminds me of like in Paper Mario, my Paper Mario Let's Play when I like absolutely owned the ultimate uh, optional boss that like it was just hilarious. I got like so stinking lucky with that. Alright then. Uh alright now he's using double team, but it's too late for that nose pass. I got your number. Alright, as you can see, um it didn't do that much damage with Giga Drain, unfortunately, even though that's the ultimate draining ability. Still kind of lame amount of damage, which is unfortunate. It did get buffed in later generations, though, I'm pretty sure. It definitely got buffed with more PP, which I very much appreciate. I have P, she ate. No. Alright, get poisoned. Thankfully, he doesn't have antidotes. That would be horrible. Uh, faint attack on. Uh, what's his face? And Giga Drain on Nose Pass. Alright, keep on going. And Gligar's another Pokemon I always like tend to forget the type of. I don't know why. I always think it's part bug for some reason. I don't know. Are Scorp yeah, Scorpions are bugs, but like... Gligar's a scorpion bat, I guess. It was sort of funny, like, um, with Gen 4, when Gen 4 was originally introduced, I saw pictures of Drapion, uh, it was one of the first Pokemon that I saw being released, and I thought that Drapion was going to be an evolution of Gligar, but it wound up not being the case, but Gligar still got an evolution in Gen 4, which I thought was really funny, that, like, of all the Pokemon, like, it was just funny that I was wrong about a certain Pokemon getting an evolution, but it still got an evolution, it just wasn't the one I thought it was. It's pretty funny, or maybe I just think it's funny and everyone's just like, you're so lame. What do you even do with your life? I don't know, I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out personally. Let's just get this over with, don't get all sappy on you now. Alright, let's see, keep on losing HP, slowly but surely, it will get done. Alright, Nose Pass is just about done, which I appreciate. Let's see, Faint Attack Dark is normal on Rock, so we'll do that, and Steel Wayne, hope for the best. Alright, Faint Attack, and there goes Nose Pass, alright then. Poor Nose Pass, I like you a lot more than most people do. I never really had a problem with it, but whatever. Get that experience, and see what we can do, Steel Wayne, could we land a hit? Of course not. 
All right, then, whatever, Aerial Ace. Yeah, he's just taunting, being like, oh, I bet you wish you had Aerial Ace in your arsenal. Nee. And you'd think he would give you a TM like that, like Aerial Ace. I would love to have Yama no Aerial Ace. That'd be phenomenal. But no, I can't, because he doesn't give you that. He gives you something else. So it is worth to do it, not just for the experience, but for a reward, which we will get eventually, as soon as we get out of this place. All right, then, Umbreon, you should have no problem taking out Gligar with just that bit of HP. So, let's finish this up. Or stealing. Yeah, I'm gonna just hang out. Be like, hey, I just want to miss one last time. All right, then. It'd be crazy if I get critical to Umbreon right now. All right, then. Down goes Yanma. You did a good job, Yanma. I appreciate your effort. All right, down it goes. Who wants to get experience? Who's close to a level up? Uh, Espeon's pretty close. All right, it's definitely Espeon. Let's go, buddy. I choose you. You just get to stand there eloquently and look awesome and stuff while Umbreon delivers the final blow. Gligar is defeated. I appreciate you have Pokemon that coordinates with your hair and your pants, but this fight is over. Wh what? I know, I never thought the power of purple could lose, but it looks like I had it on my side as well. Wow, that was one challenging and satisfying battle. Look at this, my palms are drenched with sweat. I don't want to look at your sweaty palms. There's no shame in this loss. I'm one lucky guy for being a part of this spectacular battle. And we get a weird camera angle instead of a gym badge, basically. What do we get? I'm glad that I got the opportunity to battle with you. I want you to have this. Consider it a memento of our battle. We get TM27 return. We already have this move on our Espeon. Honestly, our battle was fantastic. I will never forget the battle we had. All right, then I, yeah, you appreciate it. So TM27 is a normal type move that does more damage the more your Pokemon likes you. We have it on Espeon and it's actually been pretty useful. I was gonna give it to Umbreon just cause I kind of like having the two of them match, but it, uh, Espeon and Umbreon have the same attack stat. So it wouldn't really be much of a difference, make that much of a difference having it on both of them. I might give it to Medicham because it would benefit from just a physical attack, but I'm not entirely sure on that. There's another physical attack I might, t uh, another normal attack I might teach it later, so I'll just have to think about it some more. And yeah, after you beat the tr four trainers from going here the first time, you can actually go down here and see their training grounds. It's actually a really pretty area, but I don't know what this lady's doing. She's just watching her magic carp die. That's it. Yes, Splash, way to go. He's suffering. Bisha, Bisha. Okay then. So yeah, on a very dark note of magic carp abuse, we are gonna end this episode off here. <laughs> One last thing we could do before ending the episode off is that if you still need some off-screen training, well, I guess it wouldn't be off-screen for you, or I guess it would all be off-screen for you because you're not let's play this, unless you are, is to go to the Pyrite Coliseum. After you save Pyrite, uh, Pyrite Town from Mirror B, you could participate in new Coliseum matches. These matches are in the level 50s, however. But as you can see, I somehow survived all of them and I got a lot of level ups in the process. If you clear the first round of them, you will get the TM for Focus Punch. An incredibly powerful fighting type move, but you basically have to survive the entire turn without taking any damage in order for this move to even activate. It's really weird, but if you're ever going to use this, it would be best used in double battles like this game has. So, make the best of it if you want to use it. Next one, if you complete it a second time, you get a TM for Hail. It is basically Sandstorm for Ice types. Beat it a third time, you get the TM for Roar, which makes your opponent switch out into another random Pokemon. And if you beat it a fourth time, you get the TM for Brick Break. Not as strong as High Jump Kick, but it does destroy barriers like Light Screen and Reflect. Alright then. So, I went ahead and did that. I was actually surprised at how easy it was. Um, I There was some down to the wire fights, just the last one really. But the majority of them like used the same type of Pokemon for like the entire thing. Like the entire first round was just normal types and the next round was like grass types and everything. So it wasn't too terrible, honestly. So I went ahead and did that, got some more experience. If you want to, I'm actually surprised just like going through this again, just surprised at how many places you could go for um, level grinding. It's not just Mount Battle like I thought it was going to be, just a lot of trainers and stuff. I guess they take care of you in that regard. But I guess we could end this episode off with one more rematch, I suppose.
We haven't talked to our good buddy Willy in a while. All right then, how about we have a rematch with him? He's the one who started our adventure, sort of, kind of. But whatever, we're just gonna go ahead and talk to him. Oh hey, it's you, just the guy I wanted to see. You see, I had the urge to have another Pokemon battle with you. It was driving me wonky. Wonky Willy is what they call him. So come on, let's battle, I'm not losing this time. Yes, you could also rematch our quote unquote rival Willy. If you just wanna have a chill battle then, um, I guess you also want to hear this music again, because, like, you only get to hear it when you're having a friendly battle with friends. Alright, apparently I should have done this earlier in the game, because he's in level 30. I don't have time for you level 30 peasants anymore. I'm the level 40s, thank you very much. Alright then, so we're just gonna get rid of this guy. So he had one of his zigzagoons evolve. You could actually have multiple rematches with Willy, so I'm pretty sure if we, like, leave the place and come back, he'll have another battle for us, but I'll save that for later. I'll uh, we'll do Solar Beam and Steel Wing. See how that takes us. All right, then just keep on going. I'm actually recording this the day before I go to PAX South. It's been so stinking long before I, um, since I've been to a PAX, and uh, I haven't really made a big announcement about it. I just sort of am going for me personally, just because. Uh, hopefully, it all turns out well. This is actually my first time going to meet a lot of the Viz Nomadic people, like actually knowing them. I've seen, I'm sure I've seen them in passing um, during other VGA meetups. But, like, we didn't know who each other were, so, um, it's probably not how you construct that sentence, but whatever, it's a Midnight Beyond Let's Play, what do you expect? So, uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be fun. I'm trying my best to get videos out. As of right now, um, all the videos are gonna be scheduled and, uh, ready to go, uh, by the time I leave. However, I don't have anything planned for after I come back, which is, like, right when school resumes, so, I might have to, uh, think about that for a bit. We'll see what, what we'll see what happens. Hopefully, I won't leave you guys hanging too much without any videos. And Solar Beam, da 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 da, critical hit. Yeah, Lynoon, you didn't stand a chance. Poor Lynoon. Maybe in the future you will become Dragoon. I feel like I made that joke already. And level forty-one. Wow, one more level to end the episode off. And yes, it bothers me too that Yama's shadow doesn't have any wings. Or rather, it bugs me. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Wiped out again. Wiped out Willy is what they call him. <laughs> oh my god, Bailey's evolving. This hasn't gotten old yet. <laughs> yes, I could cut this out, but this looks really pretty. But yeah, you're tough. Real tough. Double tough. I feel like I made the joke in the first episode. You stomped us good. Stomped out Willy's with like, ah, whatever. We are done here. We got a lot of off-screen training done. I'm feeling a lot more confident now that my Pokemon are all in the level 40s. I might do even more training off-camera, who knows? But for now, we are going to end it off here. Next time on Pokemon Coliseum, we are going to continue story progression by heading back to the Mirror Bees hideout. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.